Hey, how's it going? So I've been wondering what the deal is with asteroid mining. Like every so often you hear a headline about how a floating rock is worth 96 trillion dollars or some asteroid's gonna turn billionaires into trillionaires or whatever. And you think, wow, okay, I guess Jeff Bezos is gonna be living in a yacht the size of Jupiter by next Tuesday. Well, today I'm gonna talk about the truth behind asteroid mining. What's real, what's total bullshit, and what might actually happen. Let's do it. So the first thing everyone says is that asteroids are worth quadrillions of dollars, and technically yes, if you take the mass of an asteroid and multiply it by the current market price of the stuff it's made out of, you tend to get some super ridiculously high number that sounds like it could buy every Ferrari on Earth, and a time machine, and a copy of the Epstein list, and a lap dance from Agent Orange himself. But here's the thing, those numbers don't really mean sh**. If you brought back even a fraction of that material, the price would crater instantly. Supply and demand isn't optional as a concept. Like if you drop a hundred billion tons of platinum onto the Earth, platinum stops being rare, and economically speaking it just turns into quirky stainless steel. So whenever you see headlines about an asteroid being worth a hundred quadrillion or something, just translate that in your head to scientists multiplied some numbers together and then a journalist sh** their mind out of their ass. The real value is in whether you can actually access and use the stuff, not how many dollars it would be worth on Earth if the laws of economics just kinda went on holiday for a while. Okay, so if the will all be trillionaires line is bullshit, then why bother asteroid mining at all? Well, because space hates you, that's why. Rockets are stupidly expensive and most of that cost comes from dragging raw materials out of the Earth's gravity well. Like if you want to build a space station, alright cool, right now you're gonna have to launch every single nut, bolt and sh** ticket from Florida. That sucks on two fronts, one because that's expensive and two because you're gonna have to go to Florida. But if you can get raw materials already in space, like water for rocket fuel or metals for structures and platinum group metals for whatever we use platinum for, I don't know, catalytic converters and metaphors for things that are expensive, suddenly you can make and power things up there instead of wasting half your effort lobbing them up there from down here. Astro Asteroid mining is less about flooding the Earth's market and more about building an interplanetary economy. Basically, if we want a space future that doesn't look how diarrhea on toast looks compared to a grilled cheese sandwich, we're gonna have to mine some space materials. Mining an asteroid isn't like Minecraft where you just bonk it with a pickaxe until diamonds pop out. For one thing, you're in microgravity. If you swing a hammer, you're just gonna sort of drift away instead of breaking anything. You need some kind of anchoring system, like harpoons or drills or something that screw themselves in. Or if it's one of those gravelly rubble pile ones that we've figured out most asteroids actually are, then you might want to wrap the entire thing inside of a giant plastic bag like some kind of galactic Capri Sun. Then there's the issue of material processing. You have to melt stuff in a vacuum with limited power, you've got to separate ores with no gravity, so you're gonna need magnets or centrifuges or some shit. It's not impossible, it's just kind of fiddly. And every single bit of machinery you send has to survive all the radiation and the vacuum welding and the micrometeorites and all the Kamehamehas that got shot out into space in Dragon Ball Z which were never addressed again. Okay, let's talk about which asteroids we're actually talking about because not every asteroid is a giant money rock. There's C types, carbonaceous, as in containing lots of carbon, which makes them blacker than Trudeau's face paint drawer and full of water and volatiles. They're good for making rocket fuel, you can split water into hydrogen and oxygen and boom you've got propellant. There's S types, which are silicate based, so they're more like regular rock with some metals sprinkled in. They have some slightly sexier stuff in them, but we're mostly going to use them for bulk construction materials. And then there's M types, metal asteroids. These are the ones that inspire all the crazy headlines because they've got platinum and other rare metals in them. If someone's talking about an asteroid that's going to make someone a trillionaire, it's one of of these ones that they're talking about. Problem is, these are rarer, which means they're usually further away, you don't have as many to choose from. There's a lot more asteroids to pick from if you just want to go and mine water, which seems pointless to us since here on Earth we have so much water that if I had a glass of water for every glass of water's worth of water I'd have, I'd have enough glasses of water to drown every toddler that ever existed. But water is unironically more valuable than gold out there. Now there are plenty of other types of asteroids if you want to get autistically specific about it, but these are kind of most of the story, so instead of trying to talk about dozens of different types of asteroids, I'm just going to simplify it to these three. Now, different types of asteroids are gathered in different locations in the solar system. If you break down the asteroid belt into inner, middle and outer sections, the S types are more common in the inner region, the M types are more common in the middle, and the C types are more common on the outer rim. Of course that's just kind of proportionally, you can probably find all three of these in all of those places, but the respective asteroid types are at their densest in each of these regions. So you end up with asteroids with a lot of volatiles in them, like C types and other even icier objects further out into the solar system you go, which makes sense. Think of all the moons out there, a lot of those are really icy. Think of Saturn's rings, which are just a 
disk of ice big enough that if you had a Blu-ray that big, you could fit a text document on it describing all the things I did to your mother last night. There's also the Trojan asteroids. If you don't know what those are, there's these things called Lagrange points, which is basically where the gravity balances out between two objects when one is orbiting the other. So if one object is orbiting another, there's always five points like these between these two objects. In particular, there's one ahead of and one behind of the orbiting object, and those are the most stable places. So if the orbiting object in question is a really big planet like Jupiter going around the Sun, you tend to get a massive cloud of asteroids that gets stuck in these particular regions, which is what Jupiter has, and these are the Trojan asteroids. They're kind of silicate-ish, carbon-ish, and ice-ish. And then there's also the Kuiper Belt, which is basically like the asteroid belt, but unthinkably bigger and way more distant. Anyway, we've got all these options, and they're really useful for later in the game of making a civilization in space, but the first asteroids we'll mine will actually probably be NEOs, near-Earth objects. And those don't really have any set composition, because they're all basically weird rogue asteroids that just so happen to be nearby the Earth, because they got jostled from wherever they were supposed to be initially. Like me when I jostled your mother last night. Uh, you already made a your mum last night joke? Like me when I jostled your uncle last... Wednesday. So with regards to near-Earth objects specifically, there's some C-types, there's some S-types, and there's some M-types all nearby. We don't have a huge amount of choice, but they are there, and what these do offer is the absolute minimum amount of rocket power needed, and therefore cost needed, to reach them. Which is good, because that leads into my next point, which is that even if you figure out how to land on an asteroid and chew it up and spit out all the useful materials, you've got to ask, who the hell is paying for all this? Space agencies don't have bottomless wallets, unfortunately. You can go to private investors, but when you assure them that they'll definitely get their money back in 300 years, maybe, they don't like it, the selfish pricks. The whole plan only starts to make sense if we're already doing big projects in space that need water and fuel and raw metals, you know, moon bases, Mars trips, giant orbital factories, that kind of stuff. Basically, asteroid mining probably won't start the space economy. It will follow the space economy. Sorry to interrupt, this is just a quick message to say, statistically speaking, you're probably not subscribed, so I'll make you a deal. Press the subscribe button and I won't come over to your house and do this. Not that it's any of your business, but f*** you and f*** off and leave me to my lotions. Up the floor just cracked, I believe I might find Alright, thanks, back to the video. Now insofar as the mining operation itself, there are a few approaches you can take. So first off, you can either mine on site, wherever your asteroid is in the solar system, and transport the material to where it's needed for refining, or you can just also refine it on site. Alternatively, you could transport the entire asteroid to where it's needed, like nudging it into orbit around the Earth, where we can slowly mine it there and hollow it out and put a habitat inside of it or whatever. That's a little bit riskier in the sense that, as I mentioned earlier, it turns out that the sci-fi idea of asteroids all being solid lumps of material isn't really true in most cases, unless it's like a literal chunk of a planet or something. So most of the time, asteroids are just loose piles of rubble in space, so mining haphazardly in low Earth orbit is bound to produce some orbital debris. So we might want to designate some fairly far out orbit for mining so we can keep all the floating pebbles far away from all our precious bits and pieces. And we could always just put the asteroid inside of a giant bag like you just picked it up from Tesco. Just plastic wrap the whole thing while you mine it to stop shit from going everywhere. Double bag it if you need to. We've all been there. Don't be bashful. Or we could just straight up dump the entire asteroid into the Earth somewhere unpopulated or maybe populated exclusively by French people or something. Anyway, TLDR is that early asteroid mining probably won't be hauling a giant platinum nugget up to Wall Street. It'll probably look more like a robotic spacecraft gently repositioning near-Earth asteroids and selling water and propellant to other spacecraft. A petrol station in space is a good way to think about this. Well, looky here, Martha, this fancy pants British man just called it petrol instead of gas. What in the liberal North Atlantic Harry Potter tarnation fuck is going on over there? That was meant to be an American accent, but that came out as some kind of weird pan-galactic accent. What the fuck was that? Asteroid mining's probably only going to start happening once there's customers in space already, but it'll get exponentially easier once that's the case, given that it's actually cheaper to get mass from the moon to low Earth orbit than it is to get from Earth to low Earth orbit, and it's even cheaper to get mass from the asteroid belt to low Earth orbit, assuming you don't need that mass anytime soon. Like from a Delta V perspective, or in other words, in like a cost perspective, in terms of like how big your rocket has to be, it is so much goddamn easier to nudge an asteroid so it moves millions of miles until it's near Earth, and then just nudge it again so it stays in orbit, than it is to drag mass off the surface of the Earth to use in space, even though in that case the distance covered is only a few hundred miles. It's counterintuitive, but ultimately just because stuff can kind of drift in space and your biggest enemy is gravity, of which we have a gigantic amount of when we're trying to get off the Earth, mining stuff from asteroids, once we have the facilities to do that in the first place, makes everything so much easier. And then as soon as you've got some asteroids being mined, you can then use that material to make more probes and stuff to mine more asteroids. 
it will become way exponential really easily once we get started. But getting started in the first place is really goddamn hard. That's why super heavy rockets and reusable rockets are such a big deal because they make it cheaper to get off the earth so we can start maybe at some point in the not too distant future building up our ability to do this, to get enough stuff into space that we can start actually exploiting what's there already. And then this whole thing can become exponential fairly quickly once we just have the capability of doing that. And over time, if we build orbital foundries and factories and stuff, maybe we'll start pulling metals for construction. Eventually we'll have a fully fledged space economy and then yeah, M-type asteroids will really be worth going after on a large enough scale that yeah, you could actually bring a lot of it back to Earth and then all those rare Earth metals will actually end up being really super cheap because we'll end up having loads of them. But it's a slow burn getting to that point. I mean, it's many decades at least and maybe centuries away. The version of events where Elon Musk mines an asteroid like two years from now and we all get free platinum spoons from now until forever is not how this works. Now, I don't want to kill the dream completely because there is a cool version of the future where we, you know, lasso asteroids and we park them near Earth and we hollow them out and we turn them into habitats. We will get to that point. Maybe corporations will fight turf wars over chunks of space rock, leading to some kind of asteroid wild west. I could see that happening. Although, to be honest, a lot of this is just going to be automated. It is interesting to try and think about how this is going to affect the economy. I don't know, we're going to end up with asteroid cartels with, you know, space billionaires sitting ominously in a cool space station knowing that someone's getting their robot legs sliced off today because they tried to mine water from an asteroid that was in their part of the belt? Or are things more likely to go a fully automated luxury gay space communism direction? At this point, kind of hard to say. So yeah, asteroid mining is not bullshit, but it's also not the instant cash explosion that the headlines always seem to try and make it out to be. It's more like a really slow, really hard, but ultimately necessary step if we want humanity to not be stuck on one rock forever. I mean, who wants to be here anyway? Blue sky? Dolphins? Rainbows? What is this, the liberal cook planet? Real alpha males live in the formless void! Alright, as always, big thanks to my elite level supporters, Thunderbolt 22A10, who owns an asteroid field, or as everyone else calls it, his garden that he's covered in rocks, Nomad Greg, who I sold into slavery in the Californian Bitcoin mines, Yannick Spathe, who may not have mined any asteroids, but he has pelted me with rocks a few times, Andrew Mole, who's building a death laser to mine asteroids, and exclusively to mine asteroids, and don't worry about it, it's just to mine asteroids, John Beharano, who's gonna avoid asteroid mining this time, because the last time he tried it, the dinosaurs went extinct, and thanks to all my other supporters too. Join my Patreon, or the channel membership if you want to chat on Discord, or be credited or shouted out at the end of my videos, and as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Over and out.